And for now, it's a Honor 20, and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks that you can do on this device. So, jumping straight to it, we're gonna begin with the screen resolution. And by default, I believe it's set to automatic, which means that it will change depending on the battery level. Battery level, but you can keep it, uh, for instance, lower or higher constantly without, like, it changing depending on what the percentage of your battery is. And so, to change it, we're gonna go into the display, and then find. Uh, screen resolution right here and it's set to smart so you would just disable the smart and then you can choose whichever one you like as you can see now mind you that once you change the resolution of the screen for instance like it's right now if you tend to read books or stuff like that the text for instance from like a google book reader will look uh, way bigger on the 720p than it does on 1080p so you might I actually want to change it depending on if you read. If not, uh, lower resolution will conserve more battery, so it's a little bit more, I mean, better for the battery, battery life. And yeah. So, moving on, uh, we're gonna go into the um, volume buttons. So, right now, I think it's set to change music only, right? So, I, for instance, I find this very handy. Um, if you listen to music on your device quite often as I do, then changing music volume with the volume buttons, no matter if you're listening to it or not, is in my opinion a really handy thing. And uh, you can just tap it here or just tap on the settings and then get access to the rest of it and just adjust it as you like. And mind you, you also have an option to, let's say, mute it from here without actually having to change the, the sound at all. So let's say if you want it to just not ring, you don't have to volume down all the way you can just pull down and change it to here to vibrate or be completely silent or back to ring and if you prefer to for instance change the ringtone you can always change that uh, right here where you have default volume buttons and uh, as you can see media or ringtone volume you can choose either one of them and once more just to show you uh, press the volume button then you have the settings option right here and it will take you to the settings of the sound so it's another thing now moving on we're gonna go into the private space which if you're using the phone let's say for like work slash home use then private space seems in my opinion like a no-brainer and what it does is basically create a second display or second phone on the same phone so it's actually created so you get a idea on how it works so to create it we're going to go into the security and privacy right here and find a second space or private space right here and you get a little message what it will do and you stop and enable you will need to put in if you have one um, code in so i already have one set so i need to confirm it before i can actually create another one that's the main space, so like so. Um, then you can associate a fingerprint with, I'm um, not sure which space actually. So see if let's tap associate and start scanning. Okay, so we got one, then we can tap on enable and uh, confirm main space. So let's do that again. It's main space, private space, password. So that's a private space. So now we can choose another one. For instance, we have from one to six on the main one. So we can choose from, so from six to one, uh, the new one, and then confirm it once more, like so. And then you can also associate a fingerprint with it. I'm gonna skip it because honestly, at, when you're trying to log into the second space with a fingerprint, you actually first have to put in the code. So it kind of like logs into it. So I find it a little bit redundant. And uh, now, for instance, if we wanna go back where we were, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're back on the page where we're setting it up. But if we 
lock it and try to unlock it now with the 654321. We'll go into the completely new space where basically you have all new apps and you can install apps independently. So you have different ones than you would actually see on the other space and everything is kept separately like it's a completely different device. So that's why I'm saying it's fairly good for work scenarios where you don't want to keep work files and stuff like that separate from, from the normal use of the phone. So now going back to the, to the previous one. And as you can see, because I'm using right now the second space, my fingerprint doesn't really work anymore. So I would first need to put in the code that I used to unlock it and then it will work. As you can see now and uh, without putting it in and being still in the second space it just does, doesn't recognize any fingerprint because it's by default on the second space the fingerprint is disabled so it's not even trying to use it any, anyway okay so moving on we're gonna go into one simple one and it's the split screen app so we can multitask, for instance, uh, I tend to use it most often when I'm trying to watch YouTube and then let's say text to someone or do something else, let's say on a browser, browsing whatever web. And uh, basically let's start with opening up YouTube. And let's tap on not now. And from here, there's two ways you can launch it. One is by tapping on the recent apps. And if I go back, uh, when you see the YouTube app, you will get this two bars right here, as you can see right above my finger so you can just tap on it and it will go straight into the split screen or another way it's when it's open like so you can drag your knuckle across and assuming i can do it correctly like this you should see a line okay so it doesn't really always work maybe because i have weird knuckles i'm not sure um so as you can see, you drag your knuckle across, it creates that blue line, and then it allows you to choose another app that you want to use in split screen. So for instance, I could choose, um, see something that she might be useful. Uh, let's see Google, whatever, there is a news feed. Actually not, ah, well that didn't really work out. What else is there? Um, something like, oh, messages, there we go. And as you can see, then you can, for instance, choose a video, whatever you like. Just make sure that there's no sound otherwise. Skip it. You can resize it a little bit. So it's only a video and then you can choose some kind of chat and uh, you can always have the video open and uh, do whatever else on a different screen as you can see now and if you want to close it you can just simply try to leave it and uh, it will be still open here or by just dragging it all the way back down and it will then go into the full app and you can also close it and the last thing I want to show you is the gesture navigation because this is theoretically also a Huawei. In my opinion, they have one of the better ones, uh, gesture navigations. And uh, to enable it, you would go into the settings and then go into system. So somewhere on the bottom, storage, system right here. And then system navigation right here. And you have three different options. The key ones is the, the default one. You can also have a navigation dock, which is a little bubble. I'm gonna enable it just so you can see like this and it will work like so we can hold it for longer to completely quit so yeah and the one that i'm referring to is let's disable this is the gesture which is completely no buttons and it's gonna go to a tutorial you can actually skip it too they have from a side back button from either side actually so you can do it from both then swipe up to go home like so and swipe up and hold to get into the recent apps and as you can see it's really clean it removes 
the bar on the bottom with the buttons and everything works clean and it's in my opinion a little bit more aesthetically pleasing especially on a screen like this so that would be the last thing now if you found these tweaks and tricks helpful and you like them don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching